Honestly, I've never seen a question that asked a student to draw a Bohr-Rutherford diagram for an element beyond number 20, which is calcium. The reason is that it gets kind of complicated as you progress through the periodic table. I'm going to show you here how you could do it just in case someone gets asked or if you're just curious. We're going to do it for number 32, which is germanium. Now you always start Bohr-Rutherford diagrams the same way with the number of protons in the center and the number of neutrons in the center. Uh, I'm going to assume that this is about 73 or we'll use the isotope that has an atomic mass of 73 which means we have 41 neutrons. Alright, take a look at what I have here. This is a little chart where you have the S's down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, P's starting at 2, D's starting at 3, and all the 1's and 2's and 3's and 4's are aligned. This chart is going to tell us how many electrons to put in each shell as we progress through. What we're actually going to do is start in the lowest level electron orbital, the 1s, and put in two electrons. So we draw our first shell, we put two electrons in that first orbital. The S here stands for the shape, which is spherical, of the orbital, but the important thing is that all the S orbitals can only handle two electrons. So we put two electrons in the first shell. Then we put two in the second shell. One, two. Then we put six in the second shell. One, two, three, four, five, six. What I'm doing is progressively drawing diagonal lines through my chart and it's going to tell us the order in which we put electrons into the atom. So, two into the first, two into the second, six into the second, two into the third. So I need another line here. One, two. Now I need to add another six to my third. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I need to add my next two to the fourth shell. Now I've written 20 electrons so far and in most of high school when you're drawing Bohr-Rutherford diagrams this is as far as you would go. And the reason is that the next shell you put electrons into, line, 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 is now you can put up to 10 back in the third shell. Two electrons go into the fourth shell before you can put any into the third shell. It's a little weird, eh? But according to the order of filling that I have down here, that's the way it is. So I'm putting 10 in my third shell now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. Almost ran out of space. So I have 30 electrons now, if you've been counting, and I only need two more they happen to go in the fourth shell. One, two. Now I spread them out because P's can handle six, and so those two electrons aren't automatically paired. All right, 32 electrons, 32 protons, and 41 neutrons. The trick with elements that have an atomic number greater than 20 is that you have to follow this order of filling and put two in the first, two in the second, six more in the second, two in the third, six more in the third, two in the fourth, and then come back down to the third shell. Put ten in there. Then six more in the fourth, then two into the fifth before you go back to your fourth shell and add some there. It gets really complicated. But this is the way that we fill electron orbitals with atoms from the lowest energy up. Best of luck.